Okay, but let's take a look at some of the other things that uh, this distance can do for us. It'll output an actual distance value, and it also outputs a direction, uh, which is a vector, of course. And we'll delete these two helpers we've got. Let's move this node helper over here. What we can do is we can say, okay, well, let's use some of this information about the distance output and the direction output to affect how these uh, green particles are born. Let's go ahead then and we'll expose the, uh, where is it, the speed value and also the direction of these particles. And we're going to increase uh, this pistol shot rate and we'll give them a little more lifespan. Okay, and so we take that direction, I'm sorry, the distance output. So whatever the, this distance, particle distance from the node, Whatever that distance is, is going to be used to control the speed of the particles, these green particles. Um, let's actually make sure right now that we're not borning in the z direction. We'll go ahead and born uh, directly forward in y. And we actually want to go ahead and let's uh, check our distances here. We'll do something within, uh, let's do 25. Okay. So we'll say from zero, within 25 units away. So when these red particles now are within zero and 25, we're going to output a true to position born. He'll create some particles. And we're going to use whatever the distance is as the speed. So the further away he is from this node, the greater the number of the distance. And so the, the, uh, the greater the speed value being fed to position born will be. Let's actually give this a little x there. OK. so. Oh, uh, we can't we can't see that too well. We're gonna actually uh, do something a little. Well, let's just zoom in. We can. I suppose we can see it. Okay. You can you can kind of see that these particles are, you know, they're starting off being born relatively fast, and then as we progress in time, they they don't go as far. Uh, you can't see it very well. So what I'm gonna do is actually use a, a float helper, helper float. Drop that in there. I'm gonna. Uh, this is very important. We just disconnected this value. Just so you know, you hold Shift key and you click on either the output or the input to break that connection. Shift, click, breaks the connection. Okay. Let's take that distance. We'll feed it into a float. We're gonna set the float helper to be a multiply, and we're gonna multiply by five, and then we'll go ahead and pipe that new value back into the speed output. And now what we'll see is that, yeah, we get quite a bit more dramatic uh, output here. Our, so basically, this is the distance being multiplied by 5 and then being fed into the speed value. Let's actually get this uh, node helper closer to the particle path. OK, so he comes in. He gets really close, and so the distance between him and the node is small, so these guys slow down. And then he starts going further away, and gets away. Let's actually go ahead and we'll increase our range. Let's get up to 30. Distance 30. Okay, so this is just one of the ways that we can dynamically drive data within TP is using the outputs of one, modifying them, and then feeding them into something else to, uh, to create dynamic behavior. Let's go ahead and also take a look at the direction. And we'll use the direction now, of the, the distance. So what this does is it takes every red particle, and we only have one, of course, but it'll take every red particle, calculate the distance and direction from the node, and then it's going to output what that distance and direction is. And of course, whether or not it's within the range that we specify. So now we've got a direction being fed into position born. So all these green particles are actually going to use this direction, and they're going to head out in that direction. Uh, it's, so it's going to ignore all this direction information we have here, except for variation. Variation also has its own input, direction variation, but we're not going to use it right now. So we'll go ahead and just give them a little bit of variation so they're not all on the same path. We can see what happens there is that these particles are 
being emitted from the origin. And then what's happening is, oops, let's close that and we turn on debug. Yeah. Oops. There we go. What happens is as the red particle starts to approach and move forward, there is a there is a line created here. You know, it's it's analyzing the the particle position and the node position and outputs the direction. And in this case, because the way we have them wired, we have the the uh, red particle being fed into position 1. What it's doing is it's saying, "Okay. So from position 2 to position 1, my direction is this way." And so that is the direction that's going to be fed into position born, and so those particles emit this direction. And then, of course, as the red particle gets closer and starts passing by him and moving up, that direction is now this way. This way. And so they emit in that direction. Okay. Let's take a look how we can easily reverse that. All we have to do is switch these position inputs. We'll take position 1 from the node and position 2 from the particle instead. And now what we'll see is that as the particle approaches, the direction is being calculated in reverse. And so it's calculating from the particle to the, uh, the node helper. So from position 2 to position 1, just remember that, position 2 to position 1 is going to be the direction output. So from position 2, which is the particle, to position 1, which is the node, that direction is this way. And so those particles are now being born that way. And of course their speed is being controlled by that float that we set up based on the distance from. So they slow down, and then they move that way. Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and get set up with another condition.